acting of business. Bonima Kalinga is my name, the WMI Community Development Grants Coordinator. In this month of May, we'll be talking about thinking of business or income generating activity as opposed to one-time event. And in this webinar, we'll be looking at um, a definition of key terms that we will be using in the webinar process. Uh, we'll be looking at the types of business structures, why think of business or income in, in generating activity as opposed to the one-time event. What are some of the challenges running a business or income generating activity? We'll be also looking at the principles of running a business or an income generating activity. Then we'll take up the final shot or a takeaway from this webinar as I take your questions and uh, provide some uh, brainstorming answers to that. So you're most welcome. And once again, my name is Bonima Kalinga, and I'm grateful that you could join us in this learning series this uh, 11th day of May. So what are some of the key terms that we need to look at is business. What is business? in your own understanding, in a simple understanding. What is business? What is an income generating activity? What is a one-time event? Now, a business is that entity, that enterprising entity or an organization that carries out a professional activity. And this is for commercial gain, profit gain, or other um, activities that provide income or revenue into your pocket. As you plan your activity, this is, as you're thinking about the business, think about the revenue, think about the income, think about what you get in terms of profit. And income generating activity do refer to the process of generating revenue. Anything that you use, or product, uh, the production that you, you, you try to bring on board should be in position to give you money, should be in position to increase your economic value financially and should be for financial gain. And this is the income generating uh, activity as per the definition or the terms dues permits. Then one time event is a single time or a unique event that one undertakes to implement. And this may be a medical camp, this may be a concert, this may be an awareness campaign, and you're only doing it one-off, and you're not going to do it recurrently, or perhaps it could be also recurrent, but not making for you profit. So having known the wonderful terms that we'll be using in this uh, webinar, I strongly believe we can now move into the types of business structures that we have. We have sole proprietorship. This is where an individual or a group of partners come together to do a sole proprietorship business in a bid to also get financial gain. There is all, there's what they call the general partnership. These are partnership businesses that people come together pulling the pool together and initiate an initiative that would in turn give them financial gain or generate for them revenue or increase their revenue base. Then we also have a limited company. Some people in abbreviation, you will find it a PL, I mean LP, which means a limited company or a limited by shares. These are companies which are limited by shares and you can start this initiative and bring out uh, shareholders together to bring some pool together so that you're able to do business. And there is also what they call the corporation. Corporation is also bringing these entities together. You may have a, a coffee farm, you may have a, a cotton farm, you may have a, a sibling farm, you're bringing, you're starting some form of a corporation to bring these people together and do business in a more bigger and bolder way as a cooperative or as a corporation company. We also have 
uh, limited liability companies. Uh, we have limited liability companies. We also have uh, a company limited by guarantee. Now, limited liability companies are companies which are, are run by shares or businesses which are run by shareholders. And you have to pay or buy shares to be able to undertake this business. This business also, it differentiates between you as a, a shareholder and the business itself. The business itself is a same autonomous. It's like a human being is an entity that can be sued and can sue an individual which are invested in the business. And the shareholders can as well uh, auction the shares out and others can buy shares to become shareholders in the company. We have not-for-profit uh, not organization. And the not-for-profit organization, you can have a company limited by guarantee, you can have a CBO, you can have an NGO. These are not-for-profit organization. However, there are other not-for-profit organizations which has a business hub of the organization. And that business hub do generate for them money that keeps the organization running. We talk about corporation, we have cooperative, and we have circle. These are common words that perhaps we are very familiar with, uh, saving, a village saving and uh, loans association within the communities. These are very popular in our setting. So I don't need to dwell so much into that. So why should we think of a business or running an income generating activities as opposed to one time event? I want to take a few minutes as I take some quick response from you. Why do you think we should think of a business as opposed to income generating, I mean, as opposed to the one-time event. Anyone with a uh, thought over there? What do you think it is more important to think of income generating activity? Wow, all your beautiful uh, posts are well spot on. Let's look at what we have in store for us this wonderful day. Income generating activity, why is it important? What are some of the importance of an income generating activity? One, the creation of employment. Once you're running a business, you create employment and that employment also pro promotes the household welfare because you're making money, you're making revenue, you're giving people jobs and therefore people, people's well-being are being elevated. It is for all also growth in income levels because if you're running a business it is generating for your income and in turn it is increasing your income level now when your income level increases automatically the economic impact of it trickles to the community the community economic statuses goes up and you're able to sustain this if you are managing your income generating or your business pretty well it is able to be self-sustaining and as opposed to one-time event because one-time event you will spend once and there will be no sustainability in that regard. It attracts more funding opportunities. If you are running a business which is continuous, people want to invest in your running activities, in, the business, in a, an activity that is generating income, that is uh, sustaining itself. So it will only need a supplement to boost uh, some aspects of the, the activity. So it attracts for you more funding. It improves the food security. Now you're running a business, uh, an income generating activity, let's say for example, farming. One, food security is being improved, income is being realized, community economic uh, levels, income levels are being seen and your personal income growth is also being realized. And so you need to go for this, but going for this does not mean there are no challenges in uh, running an income generating activity. There are several challenges that comes along with running a business or an income generating activities. 
One of them is securing adequate funds. You may be running an activity that needs a lot of dollars to run and securing it might be a challenge. Right now we think about the community development grants, how much we are giving perhaps for the seed grant, it may not be enough to, to run the entire activity. So you find that the money you're getting, the funds you're receiving is not adequate to, to run them. And therefore you need to be strategic and try to grow simultaneously. The cash flow management, sometimes we do not manage our cash flow well and that affects our uh, running of the business. So we need to work on handling the cash and managing our cash flow. What, where does the money go? For what purpose mm -hmm. are we budgeting for this money? And are we diverting funds for some other things? We need to keep focus on that. The other thing is, do we have the right personnel? Do we have the right uh, human resources? Sometimes we hire wrong people that are not fostering our vision, that are not taking our vision further. So hiring the right people is a big challenge. You may have hire the right person, but you don't have enough funding or enough funds to sustain the salary. So you have to think outside the box, but make sure you are having the right people working or being hired in your entity. The other thing is time management and productivity. We waste a lot of time with this era of technology, a lot of TikTok, a lot of uh, Facebooking, a lot of WhatsApp, distractions here and there. And this comes in and to affect our productivity. And once that trickles in, you find that the business is struggling and the productivity is not being realized. The output is not there. Sometimes it's about leadership, just showing direction. Because you are the sole vision bearer or the partners in this course, you must show leadership. You must take leadership. Everybody looks to you for solution. If there is a challenge, everybody is looking for you and not look at you for any possible solutions that perhaps arising from the production line, marketing line, business is not running well. So everybody's looking at you. Are we giving up? Are we trying to develop new strategies? Everybody look at you. So those are some of the challenges that comes with running a business. But also we do have lack of delegation. And if we do delegate, we delegate a half a halfly because we, we feel the people we are delegating to are not going to meet our goals. However, if you delegate with terms of reference, the production goes off, the business runs with or without you. And having the right delegation process, uh, procedure needs to be thought through. Knowledge and skills gap in the organization, in our entity, also affects us. It's a challenge. We need to run and make sure we are working with the trend. We are diversifying our technology to meet the current trend to ensure that we are remaining competitive in the market. So if that is not there, it's a challenge. But also know the other fact is it has direct impact in your home. Because you're running this back left and right and center and it is having impact on you. You are not resting enough. You're not having adequate time to fit your, yourself, pay attention to your body. And this also has got an impact on you. So it is not as rosy, but also it's not as bad as somebody who is running a one-time event. So what are some of the principles that we need to look at as we look into running a business. Principle number one is sustainability. Sustainability. Think about how the business will be running. Keep the sustainability focus, save for the business eventualities, save for the business growth. Ensure whatever pricing you're making is having the content or the component of rent, salary, improvement in the capital, and the savings. 
insurance, all that needs to be focused in in the sustainability bit of it. Coordination, poor coordination runs down the business and we need to ensure we are having the right coordination in for the business, making sure the, uh, the, the, the marketing is being done and involve the community. Community participation is key. You cannot run the business without community and without clients. And if you don't engage them, you don't make money. And therefore, there will be no sustainability. So community engagement and participation is key. Looking into the local partners to invest in your business, looking into some partners who are able to, uh, to supplement your income while you're running the business, looking into uh, other entities like, like microfinancial institution for training, you know, to help you do financial literacy training or bridge the skill gap that you have in the organization or in the business, it is pertinent. Look at local initiatives that are doing similar businesses or are able to buy in into your vision to improve your business. You know, accompaniment and technical assistance is very pertinent in ensuring that you are running a sustainable business or an income generating act activities. Pay attention to details, pay attention to the gender. Gender takes a greater percentage in your business success. If I am not sensitive with the gender in my business, then I may lose it because the people will look at, okay, how many female staff is, she, is he having? How many male staff is he having? Is it balanced? What is the focus? Uh, focus? Is, he, is, he, is he only employing women? Is he only employing male? And that affects people's decision making in supporting your entity. So think about that and pay attention to the gender issue so that you are balancing, not leaving a gap anywhere. So, one time event, the medical comes, the campaigns, this only treats the symptoms because the symptom cannot solve the problem, then we only buy the Panadol to, to subdue the headache that we are having. But what is causing the headache? We are not digging deep into that. We need to look further to see what is causing headache. Why are we not having the income? Why are we poor? Look at that. One-time event does not solve that. One-time event only treats the symptoms not the root causes of the community problems. No employability, no employment opportunities for a one-time event because why? Why should I create employment when I'm running a one-time event and tomorrow I will not need you? I only need you for today and that's it. So no employment, limited to no improvement of income levels in your community. One-time event does not bring for your income. It only takes the, the, the resources that you have saved for that one one of event, and that is it. It will not earn for you any interest on it. It will go, and that will be all. Minimum impact in the community, because it's one of, the impact is not very huge. Yes, you will, you will say, I have served 500, 1,000 in this one-time event, but what is the ripple effect? Nothing. So I've taken the Panadol and that is it. Tomorrow I will need it again. You have given me books once and the next time I don't have, so I don't go to school. You know, sustainability is not there. One time of May event is not usually fully developed and therefore there's no plan for its sustainability because it will be going one off and that is it. So we need to focus now that you know, you know the, the you know that one time event and the, in, uh, the, the and the importance of income generating activity. We know that 
this okay. when we focus on the income generating activity it will create our uh, increase our impact it will create unemployment opportunities for many it will impact on our community economic statuses it will give us opportunity to earn more and help the vulnerable communities increase their revenue base and meet their basic needs in more sustainable manner. So let's think about this. And I will be taking up questions. If you do have any, uh, you can use our Q&A section so that we respond to your questions. You can use our Q&A section or use our chat room straight away or directly. While you are typing that, maybe you can as well be looking into uh, the feedback on this. Make sure you're filling out the survey after this um, webinar so that we know whether this topic has been relevant to you or not relevant at all. And then we'll see areas of improvement. So you can take a, a QR scan and uh, I'll respond to those questions in that QR code. Any question, any question, any comment on uh, thinking of business as opposed to income, I mean, as opposed to one-time event? Yes, thank you very much. Well, the income generating activity gives really you a basis or a platform to not only rely on a donor funding to sustain your business it does help you build your empire build your financial base build your income levels to sustain your project thank you for the question If there is no another question, since everybody is contented with this, I will then um, request one of the AYO's members present here to uh, speak a little bit about the AYO. Thank you very much for attending to me and this webinar, and I will be welcoming Isaac to talk about AYO. Thank you very much slide is to have a greater understanding about grant writing and about creating impact in the society, your wonderful insights about uh, thinking about income generating, you know, businesses as opposed to one-time events. So quickly, uh, I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, quickly, I want to talk about the Educate Your Own, um, the Communication Manager, yeah, sorry, I'm the communications officer of the EYO. Um, we were representing Isaac. Uh, I want to quickly uh, tell us about EYO. So EYO is uh, an official fundraising campaign that is led by uh, the WMI students as well as the graduate student, uh, graduate scholars. Our primary aim is to, you know, support fellow scholars who are facing financial challenges, uh, with the ultimate goal of uh, achieving zero dropout rate among uh, continued students. Uh, this was a challenge uh, I also faced in uh, while I was still a student. Uh, there was a time we required to, you know, acquire some equipment that was not foreseen. And, uh, you know, so it, it really had a negative impact uh, in that there were, there, there were times I was not going for, you know, to school because I need these instruments for me to be able to attend clinic sessions. All right, so next going on is the purpose. So our purpose, like I said earlier, is to support WMI student scholars who are facing financial challenges. We want to supplement the existing funds that uh, WMI is providing them. And then this is a one-time uh, provision of $100 uh, 
so that they can, you know, supplement what WMI is giving them and uh, also, you know, um, be able to continue their studies. So we want to employ every one of us here to please donate to EYO. You'll be doing a lot of good, you know, a lot of impact. Uh, it's not enough for you to just take from WMI. It's also important that you contribute to the growth of all scholars. So we have had wonderful donors over the time, uh, wonderful, wonderful recurrent donors. Uh, you can also be one of them. And uh, Yes, Daniel, we, we have lost you. All right, we have lost. Uh, we Daniel. encourage you, welcome you to participate with students that deserve uh they deserve it to you know dream and also any degree uh we over time we have uh, various means where you can donate uh if you've been on active on the private facebook uh, chat, uh group you will see uh we'll be making posts uh of how you can donate you can donate through the donation uh, page through paypal you can donate through the Facebook. Uh, you can also donate through bank, international bank transfer. You can, if you're in Ghana, you can donate through the treasurer. If you're in Kenya, you can donate through the uh, EYO chairperson. And uh, so in conclusion, uh, like I said, it is not just a financial aid. It's about creating a supportive community and ensuring that every deserving scholar as the opportunity to complete their education. Therefore, we are inviting you to join us in this meaningful journey of support. I think um, Daniel's network is on and off. 